Okay, good morning. Can anybody hear me? Say yes. We hear you. Say hello. Give me a thumbs up. Thumbs up. Okay, thank you very much. All right, I'm a little bit early, but that's okay. Put your name in the chat so that I have a record of you being here and uh, you get credit. And we'll, we'll stall for a minute or two while we wait for other people to show up and then we'll go over what we gotta go over today. Okay, all right, so there we go. Let's go that way there, the sun's not so bad. Okay, all right. We have one minute left. Yeah. Put your name in the chat. There we go. All right. Uh, while I'm stalling here, I should remind you, there's an exam that opens today, later today. So I think one o'clock. Um, that's covering, the exam covers chapters 12, 13, and 14. The, um, uh, let's see, chapter 12 goes over the divisions of the nervous system and the basic functions like sensory, motor, and integration. Uh, it also goes over the cells, the different types of cells of the nervous system and the, um, uh, the functions of neurons, uh, how neurons get action potentials, how neurons, there, let's, <laughs> let's go that way, how neurons uh, uh, have, work at synapses to send neurotransmitters to various places. Um, so let's see, gosh, the sun is just terrible. Is that better? <laughs> That's better. Okay. All right. So, so, uh, so chapter 12, divisions of the nervous system, functions of neurons. Uh, chapter 13 is anatomy of central nervous system structures and of uh, peripheral nervous system structures. Uh, so it goes over the parts of the brain, spinal cord. Um, it goes over nerve tracts. I'm unlikely to ask you about the different nerve tracts. Uh, just know what a nerve tract is, but I'm not gonna ask you for their name. Um, then um, chapter 14 is the somatic nervous system. So that's a functional division of the nervous system. And the somatic nervous system is um, it's with the sense organs, uh, the eyes, the ears, the, uh, the skin, how those sensory receptors work, the pathways they take back to the brain, and then the areas of the cerebrum that are important in dealing with those. It also deals with the voluntary muscles, the skeletal muscles. Uh, again, there's pathways and they lean back, back to the brain. I'm not so interested in pathways. Um, those are things that, that are worth memorizing if, if, um, if you're gonna work in neurology. Um, and if you're, you know, then, then maybe, but uh, I am interested that you know kind of what the, the you know the sensory organ how that works and then the regions of the brain that deal with that or in the case of um the the skeletal muscles and voluntary movement the um areas of the brain that are controlling those muscles and um we had a, a thing that week on um uh the frontal lobe and executive functions and that's really kind of in the motor part of our brain. And so it's kind of an outgrowth of kind of planning for movements and stuff like that. Okay. All right. So let's, uh, that's, that's the exam 12, 13, and 14. It'll be open today at like one o'clock and then open through tomorrow night. Okay. Um, then I, we are, we have a chapter here that we're working on. So let's look at the, uh, um, the, um, the autonomic nervous system. Okay, and this gets us back to the divisions of the nervous system. We had these two anatomical divisions, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The uh, central nervous system, of course, that's that your largest collection of neurons, that's where most integration occurs. 
storage, uh, and you respond to info from, from uh, the peripheral nervous system and, and plan out message. The peripheral nervous system is, is nerve tissue outside of that central nervous system. And um, that consists of the nerve, uh, peripheral nerves and sensory nerves and receptors and motor nerves and receptors. And, and this is going to detect and transmit signals to the CNS and from the CNS. Okay, this, um, we can further break these things down when we talk about the peripheral nervous system into a sensory and motor division. Um, and that's, that's sensory motor nerves are at least partially separated um, in the nerve roots of the spinal nerves and in, in some of the cranial nerves. But the motor nerves are also kind of separated into somatic, which again is, is going to go to skeletal muscles. Um, and then autonomic. So these are motor impulses that are going to um, the visceral organs. That means it's cardiac muscles, smooth muscles, and glands. And so this is, it says autonomic, but I think of it as kind of automatic. These are things that are involuntary, that we don't consciously control. That doesn't mean that we're not aware of them and they don't affect us. Um, but it's that we can't consciously decide to change these. Um, and, and so this autonomic nervous system, um, this includes things like our fight or flight response, which is that in that response to a bear. And part of that response will be that your heart will start being really, really hard, um, that you'll, you'll perspire, that your body temperature will go up, that you'll become very focused um, and you'll be able, you'll get this release of adrenaline. You'll become aware of these things, but they're, they're not things that you can consciously control. They're, they're, they happen kind of automatically. Okay, and so that's an example of an autonomic response. And so this autonomic system is kind of opposed to the somatic motor system. Okay, and so there, there's somatic motor and autonomic motor. And the autonomic motor is largely sympathetic and parasympathetic, and then there's some enteric that deals with the digestive tract. Um, so these, these nerves are just like the somatic nerves. They're going out through cranial nerves and spinal nerves. But eh, I shouldn't say that. There, there, there are some differences. The, um, the somatic system is always one neuron going from the spinal cord to the skeletal muscle, whereas the autonomic system is one neuron that goes to a synapse somewhere in the peripheral nervous system, and then a second neuron goes to the organ. So this, this part of the peripheral nervous system includes what are called ganglia, collection of nerve cell bodies, where there's some synapses and potentials for processing and, and then these, these second neurons. So it's, it's kind of a different system anatomically. Um, the main divisions are this parasympathetic, which is sometimes referred to as the rest and digest system, and then the sympathetic system, which is fight or flight. Okay, autonomic, it's always motor. Okay, so these are motor responses coming from the central nervous system. Again, I mentioned it's two neurons with ganglia. And what's unique about this is almost all organs get both parasympathetic and sympathetic fibers going to them. So this is called dual innervation. And so your heart receives parasympathetic fibers and sympathetic fibers. And then furthermore, these sympathetic fibers tend to come or, or always come from thoracic or lumbar spinal nerves, okay? And then they go to the organs whereas parasympathetic fibers mostly come from cranial nerves with a few from sacrospinal nerves, just a few. Mostly it's cranial nerves. Um, and parasympathetic fibers tend to have very long first fibers. So that's, that's the main thing is looking at parasympathetic and sympathetic and knowing these things. So I mentioned sympathetic is the fight or flight response. This prepares you to, for danger. It prepares the body by kind of turning down most visceral activities and turning up uh, activities that are related to responding to a, a, a physical threat or, or stress. 
So these come out from thoracic and lumbar spinal nerves. There's a relatively short first neuron that goes to a large ganglia, either one of the sympathetic chain ganglia, which are right next to the spinal cord, maybe a couple inches away, or these large collateral ganglia, which are in the abdominal cavity. Uh, these include the celiac and superior mesenteric ganglia. Okay, and it's, it's kind of unusual. In, at the, uh, the first neuron is releasing acetylcholine as its neurotransmitter. The second neuron is releasing norepinephrine. Okay, norepinephrine's other name is noradrenaline. Okay, uh, so it's releasing an adrenaline-like molecule. And occasionally it actually le releases adrenaline, but here we call it epinephrine because it's a, a neurotransmitter. So this is, this is mostly going to uh, turn down things like digestion. So it'll inhibit digestion, it'll inhibit, inhibit urine production, um, it'll inhibit secretions from the liver and the pancreas. On the other hand, it's gonna cause the heart to, to beat really hard. It's gonna cause airways to dilate. Um, it will cause the adrenal gland to release adrenaline. And adrenaline just prolongs the effect of the fight or flight response so that it lasts 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, and so this is, you know, most of us don't get a huge sympathetic response too often, except uh, occasionally get it if, like I can think of it, when I'm uh, driving the car and somebody cuts in front of me and I think, oh my God, I could have been hit. Um, and then your heart starts beating really hard. That's, that's the type of fight or flight response, that sympathetic activation. Okay, parasympathetic activation is very different. It's the, often talked about as the rest and digest. Uh, and so this is coming from cranial nerves, um, the ocular motor nerve, the, I think it's the facial nerve, glossopharyngeal, and vagus. The vagus is a very big one here. Um, and these, these have very long first neurons that are, are right at the organ. They go, they're called, uh, the ganglia are called terminal ganglia. They're very hard to find. And in parasympathetic nerves, they will release, um, the first neuron releases acetylcholine and the second neuron releases uh, acetylcholine. So both neurons are releasing acetylcholine. Um, and this is going to pump up uh, digestive activities, urine formation. Um, it'll increase activities in the reproductive tract. It'll cause the liver to secrete fluids. The pancreas will secrete things but it will inhibit some organs. The heart will beat more slowly and it'll, it'll, it'll beat more slowly. The lungs respiration rates will go down. Um, and so it's, it's kind of doing the opposite thing. And in the, this parasympathetic response, you, you get this like after you eat a really big meal, Thanksgiving, after, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, you have the turkey and you have the cranberries and the, the, you know, this thing and that thing. And then you top it off with pie. And then you have another piece of pie with, with whipped cream. So you're, and then you sit down and you turn on the movie. And, and next thing you know, you're sleeping and boom, you're, you're, um, you're, you're asleep, but your digestive system is working hard. It's just turned down your, your heart and your breathing rate and you're ready for sleep. That's the rest and digest response. Okay, so this is, this is all uh, peripheral nerves that I've talked about so far. The autonomic nervous system, of course, is regulated and has connections to the central nervous system. And these autonomic activities are controlled in specific areas of the brain. The most important of these is the hypothalamus. Okay, it is the overall control center for, for these visceral activities and it has strong connections with other central nervous system uh, centers that are gonna control autonomic activities. There are uh, other big areas are in the brainstem, particularly in the pons and the medulla. Uh, those are big areas. Um, the midbrain has some areas as well that are controlling things like eye movements and stuff like that. And of course, these, these areas don't operate independently. They're particularly influenced by the limbic center and then the frontal lobe of the cerebral cortex, okay? And, and so these, these systems are meant to control multiple organs 
at the same time to, to kind of switch their activities. Um, and so you, these organs are cooperating um, and, and things like the heart are, are continually regulated by parasympathetic and sympathetic. And, and so we, we get that activity. So this dual innervation is important. Most organisms get dual control. Um, and, and so like here's a picture of the heart. Heart, the, if, if the heart is separated from parasympathetic and, and sympathetic nerves, it'll be at about 100 beats per second. Normally, parasympathetic nerves um, from the glossopharyngeal are normally going to slow the heart rate to 60 or 70 beats per minute. However, if, um, if or excuse me, from the vagus. However, if we get a sympathetic innervation, um, then you're, you're going to get, um, the heart rate is gonna go very, very high. Um, you know, it can go to 150 beats per minute. And so the heart is, is kind of regulated by these things, even though it has its own pacemaker. Okay, the other thing is how, does, how do these organs know to respond differently to different nerves? Well, the, the nerves are releasing different neurotransmitters. So that's one thing. And then these neurotransmitters can have different types of receptors. So like um, uh, acetylcholine, the receptors for acetylcholine can be nicotinic, which are excitatory, or they could be muscarinic, which are, are, are inhibitory. Um, and you, likely you also have alpha and beta receptors for norepinephrine. And so here this just shows receptors of the autonomic nervous system. Acetylcholine binds to nicotinic receptors. They also bind to nicotine from, from tobacco. Um, and, and so these are excitatory. Muscarinic receptors, which bind to different chemicals, um, not nicotine, there they're can be excitatory or inhibitory. And so we get this different effect. Okay, I also mentioned that the parasympathetic and sympathetic kind of axis, where you sit on that has a big impact on your health. Uh, some people are <laughs> very prone to sympathetic activation. Um, they, they are very sensitive to things like lack of time or anxiety. They are prone to anger and, and interpersonal contact. And so they're, you know, <clears throat> like that, that's sympathetic activation. Um, and and it's, it's not just that you're prone to it, it's maybe that you're in a situation like having a certain kind of loss. Um, that sympathetic activation raises your blood pressure, raises your heart rates, it slows digestion, it slows urine formation, um, it, it changes the, the fats, the amount of fat and sugar in your blood, it makes you susceptible to heart disease if you're, you're prone to the sympathetic activation all the time. Um, if, if there's a good mix of sympathetic and parasympathetic, that's, that's a healthy thing. Um, and so people need to, to do things that, that shift them from one of these to the other. And so this is uh, sometimes uh, anti-stress type things like meditation or prayer, uh, biofeedback, exercise, which actually resembles sympathetic activation, but when it ends, you, you kind of swing towards parasympathetic. So it does, it does the thing as well. Um, and I just think humor and uh, things like toddlers and dogs, where there's this this kind of anti-stress thing associated with them. All right. So, so, so again, autonomic is a division of the peripheral nervous system. Okay, it's it's the opposite of the somatic. Okay, so it's it differs from the somatic in anatomy and function. It coordinates responses at many many organs. This autonomic system. Um, and we have nuclei in the central nervous system that are controlling this. Uh, the sympathetic part of the autonomic nervous system, that's thoracic and lumbar spinal nerves with large ganglia that are, are usually pretty close to the spinal cord. Um, the, these cells, these sympathetic nerves at the organ are usually releasing norepinephrine, okay? Parasympathetic nerves are typically from cranial nerves. There's a few from spinal nerves, but typically, typically from those four cranial nerves, these have small ganglia and they're releasing acetylcholine. Um, and, and what the receptors are determine the responses. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? Does that make sense? 
Anybody? You can give me a thumbs up. If you just, even if you're just nearby the computer, give me a thumbs up. Just so I know you're still there. Thank you. <laughs> okay, three people. <laughs> Four people. <laughs> Five people. All right. Again, put your name into the chat if you came in late so that I have a record of you being here. Okay. Um, uh, Chloe. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, well, oh. The lab for this week, so I'm, I will have that ready in a in in a half hour or so. So I have a video for the dissection, basically one cut right between the two hemispheres. Um, you have to first remove the um, uh, the dura mater, which is a loose fibrous sac that's around the brain. That's done with the scissors. There is some extra stuff on some of the brains, so so there are some extra parts of the back end of the um, the uh, nasal cavity, and then uh, the nerves to the eyes are still there. So there's the stuff that you cut off, and I think you can see in the video when I cut it off. Um, so uh, I'll post the video soon. I'll post some instructions on what to submit. There'll be a quiz next week on on uh, the brain. Um, and cranial nerves, okay? And then work on the exercise review for exercise 17, okay? All right, so exam opens later today, one o'clock. Look for it. You have today and tomorrow to do the exam. Um, lab stuff will be available later today. Um, I'll be checking emails today in case anything goes wrong. Hopefully, hopefully there won't be. Um, uh, and we'll see how things go. Okay, no meeting in lab next next week or the week after. Um, stay home, <laughs> take care of yourself, wear a mask, wash your hands, um, and stay away from people who are showing signs of, of respiratory disease. Okay, so uh, that's gonna be the end for us today. I'll post this online after it, it, it compresses and uh, we'll see how things go. Again, exam and lab showing up later today. See ya, hope things go well.